As we have already reviewed the hell out of the 130mm Cyan Ring 4 lineup, now it's time to tackle the 140mm lineup. Today it's going to be all about the new Cyan Ring 4 140mm PVM high speed. Similarly to how the 120mm lineup works, there are three separate versions of this fan. The high speed, the regular speed PVM and the one that we are not going to talk about. Also similar to the 120mm lineup, between all three of those there is literally zero optical, zero feature-wise difference between any of them except for the fan speed. You will not be able to keep them apart, good luck for trying, I have my difficulties, I'm not even sure that all three of them are high speed, one could be not high speed, I don't know, they are looking very very similar, and the only indicator is the sticker in the back. That being said, there are significant differences to the previous Sandwing 3 lineup however. For the last decade, Be Quiet had a design with seven very big but just slightly bent wings, and due to aging reasons and the fact that somebody discovered that static pressure is the thing, Be Quiet decided to switch this up for the new Sandwing 4 line. For the 120mm lineup, they went with a 9 wing design with a lot smaller wings but bent quite aggressively, which contributes to the fan pushing the air a lot harder. Additionally, Be Quiet also ditched the octagonal thing for a regular round inlet and outlet and enlarged that central area with an all new matte black logo slapped on top, which by the way I believe looks fantastic. For the 140mm lineup, of which we are looking now at the 140mm high speed, something changed again. Instead of those 9 wings, we now have 7, but they are still a lot smaller and bent more aggressively. How this will affect performance, we will see later on. Comparing the new 140mm lineup to the previous one did reveal even more changes, however. The first one is their speed. Instead of the previous 1600 rpm, the new ones are spinning at 1900 while pushing 78 CFM at 2. 36mm of H2O. And compared to the older ones, this means that we won a whopping 0.83 CFM and 0.2mm of H2O. But before you think this is just a joke, the fan blade design can contribute a lot more than you might believe. And how all of this ended up performing in a real world environment, we will see later on in the benchmark section. But before, let's finish up the fan. Although there were many changes made, the packaging really ain't one of them. The Sandwing Force comes in almost the exact same box as the original one. A bunch of imagery and some short specs and inside we'll find two separate boxes, one of which has the fan and the other one with a bunch of accessories. Again, similarly to the older Sandwing 3, the new 4s will have a separate pair of mounting edges for regular fan screws. But unlike the original one, removing them on here is as easy as pressing those edges with two fingers and pulling them away and then just press the new ones on. Very very easy, it doesn't hurt at all and then you can install the fan using the regular fan screws on top of a radiator if you really want it. The mounting edge system that comes pre-installed are the push pin edges. These can be used by simply positioning the fan wherever you want and then install it, in, of course in a, in a case mind you, by pressing in the pin from the other side. Very easy and they will keep in place surprisingly well. As a small detail, which is very poorly explained, like I saw it like a month ago on, a, on, a, on a, some PDF that they sent me about those fans and I never saw it again, I have no idea where it is explained, but there is a feature that is never really mentioned anywhere. The push pin edge system is reversible, but the two sides are not identical. One of them is marked with an S and the other one with an L. Though I'm not sure what those letters mean, I guess space and low, but the L side has a tiny piece of rubber stick out, meaning that if you would install the fan for example in the back with the L side going behind the fan like on, on the case as it is uh, installed by default, you would end up having a very tiny gap between the fan and the case. And by reversing those you would take away that gap and make it completely stick to the mesh filter. Now although the gap will 100% sure it won't change anything performance wise, it can do a lot regarding noise. And there are instances where a specific combination of a fan blade design and a mesh filter can produce horrible sound. As an example, noise blocker and basically any mesh structure. A horrible combination if you don't have that gap, it, it, you really need that gap. Therefore we have that little knob. If you experience horrible sound, 
make sure to have that gap in between. And if you don't have that, then just don't care because it won't change anything. As the last mini point, we have a 4-pin PVM cable that the fan is powered by. It looks identical to the previous version at 500mm length and some random sleeve on top, but considering that we now know how the cable looks like on the Pro line, I uh, would have hoped, or I still hope, that the next generation or the next iteration, like the next product batches, will also get that new connector because it's just amazing. This one is okay, but the other one is straight from heaven. Anyway, with the fan covered, let's get to the benchmarks. While letting the Be Quiet Silent Wing 4 one forty mm high speed spin at its max length non RPM, it managed to keep the CPU at 43 degrees C above ambient. And this is freaking interesting. It makes sense that it landed slightly behind the Pro line, because that thing, that thing is just a freak, but at the same time, it landed a degree behind the 120mm high-speed version. And that is kind of weird, but it is explainable. And I want to I wanna address that a bit deeply. Generally speaking, there is, let's call it a consensus, that a 140mm fan is better than a 120mm fan. They are bigger, the wings can therefore push more air, thus they perform better. And what a toxic comment section will generally say is that you can always take a 140mm fan, limit the fan speed a bit down, and you will have the same level of performance at a lower noise. But that's not even nearly as often the case as you might believe. <coughs> this can be true. Take an Arctic P14 a P12 as an example. Those are pretty similar fans, but they have the same wing design and the Silent Wing 4 line does not. And this is crucial. Yes, generally speaking, a 140mm fan will be quieter for the same level of performance, but the 120mm high speed is rocking 2500 RPM and pushing 76 CFM at 3.96mm of H2O, and that's a tiny bit less CFM at a third more force in, in form of static pressure. So yes, a Silent Wing 4 140mm high speed cannot push the air as hard as a 120mm, therefore it landed a degree behind, plus this, th those are different wings. Those are seven, and this has nine. It is not one-to-one -one comparable. That, that doesn't work here. So, to correct the general consensus a bit, a 140mm fan will be more noise-to-performance efficient if everything else is exactly the same, which in this case, it is not. But, and that's also the last but for today, all of this doesn't mean that the 140mm high speed as an independent piece of hardware cannot outperform its smaller 120mm counterpart in noise to performance, even if the max performance isn't on the same level. So let's take a closer look at that. First up is the Lightwing 140mm high speed, Silent Wing 4 140mm high speed, and the Silent Wing 4 120mm high speed. Yeah, sorry, I, I don't have an older Silent Wing 3 high speed. That, Sorry, I don't have one. Trying to recover from the fact that the Lightwing 140 high speed is no match to the efficiency of the new Sandring 4 line, because yes, this is a significant gap, we are able to observe that the 140mm high speed lineup is in fact taking the lead for the majority of the time, and it may be a very, very small gap, but until the brute force 2500 RPM of the 120mm line kicks in, the Silent Wing 4 140 high speed did a really good job outperforming the little one. And if we compare that to basically every other 140mm fan that I have, the Silent Wing 4 140mm high speed did a spectacular job. For the majority of the time, it was one of the best fans out there. It beat every Arctic 140mm, its own predecessors, and even the noise blocker fan. The only thing it did not manage to beat are the long time lasting Noctua NF-A12X25. However, here we can observe a amplified version of what the 120mm lineup was capable of. At the very end of the curve, which is 25% of its max fan speed, the Silent Wing 4 140mm high speed managed to not thermal throttle the CPU, something that the A12X25 wasn't capable of. And compared to the 120mm lineup, this moment came even quicker, giving the 140 version the absolute lead at the very, very low RPMs. And this means that although the A12X25 might be better if you need a ton of air blowing through a filter, if you have a very, very good case with a really, really good cooler, and you want the fan to spin at the bare minimum because it wouldn't change anything, because 
because let's be honest, 90% of the work is done by the CPU cool and the fans for the case fans are just there to be there. For that use case, the side wing 4 140mm high speed is one of the very best. So where does this leave us? Well, this is an excellent fan. As far as I'm concerned, for radiators or heat sinks, I would generally prefer to go with the Pro line because, you know, you have that, uh, that air leakage thing. But for case 10 usages, you are usually looking at the very, very low RPM numbers. And for the 140mm high speed, it, it is taking the first spot. So for us, an absolute recommendation from our side. We love the fan. We love how the design turned out. And the new wings are definitely something better than what we had before. And the build quality of these is also very, very good. Maybe not as good as the Pro line because the edges kind of give it a little bit of rigidness, but still very, very good. And for a single euro MSRP difference, I believe that the 140mm lineup are definitely the better option for our case. So if you are looking for an excellent case fan, here you go. But okay, this should be it for Be Quiet and the new Cyan Ring 4 140mm high speed in 140mm form fact. At this point, a huge thank you to Be Quiet for sending them over. And of course, we'll continue our endeavor with the regular PVM versions of the 140mm form factor. But until then, have a look at the Pro lineup. I had to strap the PC to the table because it was starting to, you know, like, like, like vibrate away. It was weird. On a side note, we now have channel membership, so if you're looking for a good way to sell your soul for an RG poop emoji, that's a pretty good way to go. Addition, you can rest assured that the income will not only keep the channel afloat, but it will also serve to get the... Stay. You know what? No, it will also serve to get an invisible thing that I can put here so that be quiet boxes don't fall. The, the opening is in the bottom, so once you open it, it will never be straight again. And it's... I have such a hard time to position them, it's... Hmm. Yeah, the video's over anyway, so thank you for watching and hope to see you in the next one.